Hey people, it's Nas Talkie. And I came across this and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you. This is from BlackWallStreet.org. So, this is O.W.G. O. O.W. Gurley, the visionary builder. Just around the start of the 20th century, O.W. Gurley, a wealthy African-American landowner from Arkansas, traversed the United States to participate in the Oklahoma Land Run of 1889. The young entrepreneur had just resigned from a presidential appointment under President Grover Cleveland in order to strike out on his own. In 1906, Gurley moved to Tulsa, where he purchased 40 acres of land which was only to be sold to colored. Black ownership was unheard of at the time. An educator and entrepreneur who made his wealth as a landowner, Gurley purchased 40 acres in Tulsa to be sold to coloreds only. Senate Bill No. 1, the Senate state's first piece of legislation, prevented coloreds from residing, traveling, and marrying outside their race. You see how seriously they've taken it, that the entire states are founded on who can do what, with who, and where. Gurley's property lines were Pine Street to the north, the Frisco Rail Tracks to the south, Lansing Avenue to the east, and Cincinnati Avenue to the west. One of Gurley's first businesses was a rooming house which was located on a dusty trail near the road. This road was given the name Greenwood Avenue, named for the city in Mississippi. The rail there became very popular among African-American migrants fleeing the oppression in Mississippi. The fine refuge in Gurley's, Gurley's building as a racial persecution from the south was non-existent on Greenwood Avenue. In addition to his rooming house, Gurley built three two-story buildings and five residences and bought an 80-acre farm in Rogers County. Gurley also founded what is today known as Vernon AME Church. In the 1830s, many African Americans journeyed to what would later be called Oklahoma, experiencing undesirable hardships along the Trail of Tears with five civilized tribes. Under President Andrew Jackson's administration, the Indian Removal Act relocated the tribes and their slaves to the established Twin Territories. Of the 32 black townships that were established in America after the Civil War, 28 of them were in Oklahoma before it became a state. Gurley, one of America's earliest pioneers, named the Greenwood District. The still unpaved street was also served as Tulsa's racial dividing lines. After Gurley's purchase of the land, Tulsa began to grow. Black ownership was unheard of at the time, but under the state's Jim Crow laws, Greenwood was born out of necessity. And also, this is one thing that I would often say. People often talk about um, reparations. This also proves that the real wealth is not in cash payouts, although that is something they should be get. The real payout is in ownership of land. Good land. Just something to bear in mind. Let's keep going. The racial climate prevented blacks from shopping anywhere but Greenwood. Among Gurley's first business was a boarding house located on a dirt road crossing the Frisco tracks, which would later be named Greenwood Avenue. By 1913, more businesses followed, including law and doctor's offices of Buck Colbert Franklin and A.C. Jackson, respectfully, Dunbar and Booker T. Washington schools, Vernon AME and Mount Zion Baptist Churches, Ricketts Restaurant, the Williams Dreamland Theatre, Man's Grocery Store, Stratford Hotel and host of haberdasheries, drug stores, cafes, barbershops and beauty salons. This implementation of colored segregation set the Greenwood boundaries of separateness that exist here in 2014. Pine Street to the north, Archer Street and the uh, Frisco Tracks to the south, Cincinnati to the west, and Lansing Street on the east. The segregation is pronounced in certain landmarks south of Archer, Greenwood Avenue, does not exist in white neighborhoods. Another Amer African American entrepreneur, J.B. Stratford, arrived in Tulsa in 1899. He believed that black people had a better chance of economic progress if they pooled their resources, worked together, and supported each other's businesses. He bought large tracts of real estate in the northeastern part of Tulsa, which he had subdivided and sold exclusively to other African Americans. A number of other blacks soon followed suit. Stratford later built the Stratford Hotel on Greenwood, where blacks could enjoy the amenities of the downtown hotels who served only whites. It was the largest black-owned hotel in the United States. Gurley's prominence, influence, and wealth were short-lived. In a matter of moments, he lost everything. During the race war at the Gurley Hotel at 112 North Greenwood, the street's first commercial enterprise valued at $55,000 was lost, and with it Brunswick Billiard Parlor and Doc Eastman and Hughes Cafe, Gurley also owned a two-story building at 119 North Greenwood, a house, Carter's Barbershop, Hardy Rooms, a pool hall, and cigar store. All were reduced to ruins. By his account and court records, he lost nearly $200,000 in the 1921 race war. Because of his leadership role in creating this self-sustaining exclusive black enclave, it had been falsely rumored that Gurley was lynched by a white mob and buried in an unmarked grave. However, according to the memoirs of Greenwood pioneer B.C. Franklin, 
Gurley exiled himself to California, the founder of the most successful African-American community of his time, banished from the history books and drifted into obscurity. He was honored in a 2000 documentary film called Before They Die, the road to reparations for the 1921 Tulsa race riot survivors. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll leave this in the description so you can see it yourself, and I'm going to see if I can find that um, documentary. So please comment, reach and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, uh, I'll leave my GoFundMe in the description, and I'll leave my Instagram there as well. Peace.